Hello and welcome to the College Tech Math course. Uh, the course is going to run along as a flipped classroom format and the video lessons will be as discussed in class. So our first unit of study is exponential functions. So that's unit one. That's what we'll be working on. Every lesson I introduce uh, the name of today's topic. So today our topic is re uh, reviewing necessary skills. And then I also talk about the goal, and that needs to go into your uh, record keeping uh, page. So today's goal, I am able to differentiate between functions and relations, so very, very important. And you can use function notation and state domain and range for given graphs. And those are really the topics we're talking about. We're going to talk about functions versus relations, what that is. Then I'm going to review function notation, and then we're going to review domain and range. So those are what our major focus is today. So very quickly, going through function versus relation. So this goes back to grade 9 and 10. So our function, and I'm going to keep it in simple terms here. Function, a relationship where each input has only one output. Okay, and that's the important part right there. Only one output. All right. In terms of a graph, if you recall back to grade 9, we talked about the vertical line test. So for example here, a line, 2x plus 1, that would qualify as a function. So it looks something like this. Okay. In grade 10, you did a parabola. Y equals X squared minus 3. And it would look like this. And that would work uh, also as a function. So our vertical line test, again, the vertical line test, you simply take a pencil and hold it vertically. And as long as the green and red graph only crosses that vertical line once, like it does there, and there, and there, there, and there, and there. Okay, as long as it only crosses it once, you have what we call uh, call a function. Okay? And remember, we talked about way back in grade 11, the function factory, where it basically says, if I put a 2, a 1, a 1, and a 2 in to this function factory, and whatever happens, if I put a 2 in the first time, it comes out of 5. Then the next time I put a 2 in, it's also coming out of 5. If I put the 1 in, say it comes out of 3. I put the other 1 in, it too comes out of 3. So it's always the same thing every time. No matter how many times you plug 2 into the equation, you always get a 5. The converse or flip side to that for a relation, relation, and that's a relationship. where each input may have one or more outputs. An example of that is a square root function. If you take the square root of a number, it could be plus, so a square root of 9, for example, it could be plus 9, it could be minus, or sorry, square root of 9 plus 3 or minus 3. So it has one or more. So graphically, what happens is that you have a graph that might look like this. So a parabola on its side. Or you may have an S curve. It's a whole bunch of examples. And in each case, if I was to draw that vertical line test, this function fails because it crosses in three locations. Similarly with that parabola, crosses and crosses, so it fails the vertical line test. Okay, And what happens in a relation factory, this is not where you go to find your future husband or wife, okay. if I take the same numbers again, the 2, 1, 1, 2, and you plug it into this factory, if I put the 2 into the factory, we may get that 5 out. 
I then come back the next day with a 2 and I want a 5, but what happens is you end up with a 10. Okay, and there might be other answers that involve, are involved there. You plug a 1 in, you might get a 3. If you come back the next day with your newly grown 1 and you put it into the factory, now you might get a 7. So with the relation factory, it's not the same output every time. Function notation. If you recall grade 9, and what I just had on the other page as well, okay, grade 9, we had you working with the y equals notation. In grade 11 then, we started moving you to uh, a more uh, college university notation where it's replaced with f of x. And what you need to remember, or you need to get through and remind yourself, get through your head, is that y equals and f of x equals, they're identical, they're, they're the same thing. What is nice with f of x, or function notation, so what is nice with function notation the advantages so for f of x the first thing number one we can name the function okay so the example there, we could have an f of x function, and let's say we're working with two other functions. I'll just call them g and m. And now it's easier to name, whereas before, and I'll do that in green, in grade 9 or prior, we'd have y equals, y equals, y equals. How do you tell them apart? Well, some of us taught you maybe put a subscript in. Subscript's kind of annoying. Uh, the f, g, and m much, much easier, um, a no easier notation to keep track of. Okay? The second option, or the second advantage, okay, easy to identify the independent variable. Independent variable. So for example, f of 2, this means that all x values are 2. Okay. So they all, all the x values are 2. So it's easier for us to identify what we're plugging into this equation. And that f of x notation again, and I'll just uh, maybe do a bit of a summary here at the bottom. So your summary with the f of x, and there's not much to put in here, so you don't need a whole lot of space if you're worried about space. That's the name of the function right there, and that is value of your independent variable. Okay, so there we go. So there's your function notation revisited. All right. What I'll do is I'm going to cut it off there, and we're going to talk about domain and range, and your domain and range, again, in the next video. Remember, we're looking at this format here. For example, okay. so here's the variable we're talking about. Here's the conditions. And... This tells you what type of number x is. So that's where we're going to go next in the next video.